Oh, okay, so where we left off, we had our two uh, partial differential equations, so PDEs for short. Uh, so here was our scalar potential equation, and here's our vector potential equation. We're going to solve these for both the scalar and vector potential. We're just going to take care of this equation here because the, uh, the solving will be analogous for the, uh, the vector one. A good method for this is by using the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform of an equation like this uh, in terms of the, the time variable, what it does is it transforms from uh, time into a frequency space. So that's why we have an omega here instead of a t. Uh, and it's defined this way. Uh, here t is just a dummy variable of integration. Similarly, we can define our inverse Fourier transform like this. Uh, the factor of 2 pi is just by convention. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be using the inverse Fourier transform to replace uh, the function uh, uh, phi here into our differential equation. So once we do that, it'll look something like, like this. Looks kind of messy, but what we did is we actually combined the two, uh, the two integrals at the top. And uh, we brought the derivatives inside. So we exchanged the, uh, the order of integration and differentiation. Let's see, we brought our two derivatives inside. We're going to actually take the time derivative here of our exponential function. So with that, we'll get a omega squared coming up in front over here. And uh, so this is what you end up with after canceling the exponentials and, uh, and saying that since the integrals are uh, equivalent, then also the integrands will be equivalent. And you end up with a, an ordinary differential equation. Uh, so we can actually simplify this quite a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to make uh, a variable uh, lambda squared equal to minus epsilon naught mu naught omega squared. Why minus? I'll explain that in just a bit. And to simplify the right side here, we'll just make it equal to some function of r. So we end up with uh, this differential equation right here. Notice I om omitted the omegas because they aren't important right now. We're just looking at the position variable. So why did I take minus epsilon naught uh, mu naught omega squared, that is because I needed an equation of this form. So I needed to get a, a minus sign right here. This is called a screened Poisson equation. Uh, it's an equation that we'll be able to solve using Green's functions. So I will define the Green's function right here. So the Green's function, it's quite simple. It's actually the solution to the differential equation where your function here, f, is equal to a delta function. So, uh, so that's simple enough. Now, we won't go into the nitty gritty of uh, complex analysis in order to solve this, but I can assure you the solution to this uh, differential equation is e to the minus lambda r over 4 pi r. Now, in order to solve for a general uh, function here, because sure, g is the uh, solution where f is the delta function, but to solve for a general function f, we're going to decompose the function f into a series of uh, delta functions. We're actually going to add them up. And the way we're going to do that is, uh, so we're going to integrate over uh, a variable r prime, that should be r prime right here, uh, with a weighting function f of r prime. So what this translates into is, since g is the solution of the equation where f is equal to the delta function, then for a general f, which is the sum of delta functions, then we can just say that the solution will be a sum of the, uh, the Green's functions for respective uh, r prime. So we're going to integrate again over r prime. That should be right here. Uh, so this will be our solution. So what we can do is we can plug in the Green's function we found and also our function f, but uh, we'll replace r by r prime. So here g was uh, the Green's function in terms of r, and here is the norm of the vector r here. So if we want to define the Green's function for a delta function r minus r prime, then it'll simply be uh, g so of r minus r prime, and that will look like e to the minus 
lambda. And again, taking the norm. There we go. So that's what we replaced right in here. And we replaced our function f, which was uh, rho over epsilon and uh, our prime in there. We're going to use the inverse uh, Fourier transform equation, uh, which looks like this. And we're going to replace our, our uh, Fourier transform into here. And now again, it gets messy. But luckily, we can simplify it. Uh, so we're going to actually be combining our two exponentials here. So our, our uh, e to the i omega t with our uh, big complicated exponential right here. We're going to factor out our uh, i omega. And what you end up with is e to the i omega. And then, and then you have this term t minus r minus r prime over c which we will define to be the retarded time. It's the time at which the signal was sent. And t here is at uh, the time at which it was received. So we can say that there is a time delay uh, due to the time it takes for uh, the signal to travel at the speed of light. And that time delay is the delta t. It's t minus t prime, which is r minus r prime over c. OK, so we're on the final stretch here. There should be a 1 over 4 pi epsilon up front. And so I placed in my t prime. What we're going to do is we're going to do a Fourier transform once again. This is the last time. And what we end up with is we replace our uh, omega becomes t prime. We get rid of that exponential. And this is our final form for the scalar potential uh, function, so in terms of the charge density. And here, doing the exact same um, steps, we can get our uh, vector potential equation in terms of the current density.